All right, uh, on 8 2, I just want to show you this. This picture on the left here is actually the very first battery, or one of the very first batteries ever made. So, this was made by Alessandro Volta, which is why we call this a voltaic cell. And essentially, what he did, they show in the diagram here that these were just alternating like copper metal strip, a paper soaked in a salt solution, which you should know now is an electrolyte, and then a zinc. And then because they're all stacked, each one of these had the potential to make 1.10 volts. And so when he stacked a whole bunch of these together, he could get a usable voltage. So basically this was the first battery with a pile of metal and some wet paper, he was making voltage. Okay. Now down below that is what I want to show you. So in this, we're going to fill out this table to understand uh, how these terms work and going back to our objectives, uh, the similarities and the differences between some of these cells. So in this top one, you're just going to write uh, electrochemical cells. Now this is going to include both uh, families that we're going to call them. Uh, there's the voltaic cells and there's the electrolytic cells. So electrochemical is a broad term that covers both of those. Okay. Now there are five constants that apply to all of these. It doesn't matter if you're talking about voltaic cells or electrolytic cells. These five are always the same, which means back to our objective, if you were looking at the similarities, these would be at least some of those similarities. The first similarity is that whoever gained the electrons was reduced and will become the cathode. That's step number one. On any one of these cells, identify who is the cathode by figuring out who is being reduced or who is the strongest OA. So that in the second one is also, if it lost electrons, it was oxidized, which means it's the anode. Remember the C and the A that we tossed in there mean cathode and anode. So identify your cathode and your anode. Those are important. So let me just draw over here a really rough diagram. You don't need to draw this one necessarily. Ooh, that was bad. All right, there's our wire. So let's say I have identified that the SOA is over here. That means that this side is the cathode. If this is my strongest reducing agent, then this side is my anode, okay? Now the next rule is that the electrons always flow from the anode to the cathode. So the electrons are always gonna flow like this. Now, it doesn't always mean they're going to go from right to left, right to left, but it means that they will always flow from the anode to the cathode. That's why that first step is important. You've got to identify those first, okay? All right, so now I've got electrons flowing from the anode to the cathode. My next constant is that the anions, whoa, always move towards the anode. So here in my U tube, if I had negatively charged ions here, they would move towards the anode. Right? They're going to move to whichever side it needs to, whether that's through the salt bridge or whether that's through the porous cup, they're moving. The cations are going to move to the cathode. So positive ions are going to move this way towards the cathode. Again, either through the cup or through the salt bridge. All right, these other ones are the differences, and this is where the two families are different. This side is the voltaic cell. This side is an electrolytic cell. And these two are, are very different. The one we learned about today is a voltaic cell. It will always have a positive voltage. 
it will always be a spontaneous reaction. Right? Meaning as soon as you connect the circuit or connect the battery to something, it's working. Right? We want, so the OA on our table, the OA would be above the RA. Right? OA above the RA, so it's spontaneous reaction. And now that you know how to do voltages, you will always have a, uh, sorry, that we're turning chemical energy Uh, yeah, we'll say chemical energy into electrical energy. So the stored chemical energy of the battery is being converted into electrical energy. The electrolytic cell, let me see if I can get out of the way here a little bit. The electrolytic cell is exactly the opposite. If you calculate these ones, you will have a negative voltage. They will be non-spontaneous reactions. And they turn electrical energy into chemical energy, into stored energy. All right. So there's one more video. I'm going to change the order. I actually did the last video before I did this one. So when you get to the end of that one, you'll understand why I got messed up and confused. Um, watch that last video then you can do that first page of homework and um and that's probably good for today thanks guys